Hey guys, today's video is going to be the Enigma Machine. What is an Enigma Machine? Well, let's set the scene. It's World War II, Germany is fighting most of the world in the second installment of the war to end all wars. Nice one, guys. In order to maneuver troops and stuff, the Germans would send secret messages being like, G'day, mate. Actually, they probably wouldn't have had an Australian accent. They probably would have been pretty German. Anyway, they'd be like, G'day, mate. Yeah, what? Send all your, uh, your camels to quadrant B. I'm, um, I'm not very good at history or geography, so sorry. Anyway, if the allies could decipher this message and then send whatever camel's weaknesses to quadrant B, it's, uh, it's probably tanks. I think it would be fair to say it's tanks. Like, I'd be pretty confident sending in tanks against camels. So the Allies would send in like four tanks to Quadrant B, rendering the Germans camelous and effectively winning the war. So if the Germans wanted to have any hopes of winning, they would need to encrypt their messages. This is where the Enigma machine comes in. The Enigma machine was the best encryption device the world has ever seen. While there are tons of other encoding methods, none of them were quite as extraordinarily paranoid as Enigma. Enigma was like a fancy typewriter, but when you press a key, a different letter lights up on the machine. This is how you use it. Say we want to encode a message, just a random message, say subscribe. First, you would want to press the S key and the letter lights up. Let's say it's P. We write down the letter P and then we rinse and repeat until we've encoded our word. So subscribe becomes S fold. It's not what it is. P permanent. <laughs> so subscribe becomes permanent S fobble. I, I, that probably was so far from what it was. All right, anyway, also notice that the first S and the second S are encoded as different letters. This is the wonderful thing about Enigma. After every key is pressed, the encryption mechanism changes. So the encryption of the second S was different to that of the first. The machine works exactly the same backwards as it does forwards. So in order to decipher the message, the machine has to be in the exact same state that it was when we started encoding our message. Then we type in the message received, which was permanent S fobble, and we get our original message, subscribe. Also hit that bell button if you wanna get notifications of when I upload anyway. <laughs> okay, let's talk about how the machine actually works and then I will attempt to recreate it. First thing to understand is that all Enigma is, is a simple circuit. When you press a key, electricity travels from the key pressed to the light bulb which lights up. The tricky bit is how the wiring changes. So let's say we press the letter A. Electricity travels down the wire until it gets to the first of what is known as a rotor. The Enigma machine holds three rotors. The rotors are what changes every time you press a key. Zero points for anyone who guesses how they change. More specifically, the rightmost rotor rotates one place. These rotors work much like the hands on a clock, so after the rightmost does a full revolution, the second rotor rotates once. And then once that one does a full revolution, the third rotor rotates one place. Inside each rotor, there are input and output connections, so the electricity flows from the key pressed through to its corresponding input connection of the first rotor. And each input connection is wired up to an arbitrary output, making a massive tangled crisscross wiring inside each rotor. So the electricity flows through the output of that rotor, which is connected to the input of the second rotor, which then flows to the output of the second rotor, to the input of the third, and finally to the output of the third rotor. So depending on the position of the rotors, the electricity could flow out of any place of the outputs of the third rotor. The output of the third rotor is then connected back in on itself to another output of the third rotor. So now the electricity flows back through the third rotor, through to the second, through to the first, and finally back through to the light bulb. <sighs> Okay, in order to decode a message, you need to know the exact rotation of each rotor. So there are three rotors, each have 26 inputs and outputs, thus they can be rotated to any of 26 different positions. So let's work out how many possible settings this Enigma machine has. That's 26 times 26 times 26 for each of the rotors. Okay, that means there are 17,576 different settings that this machine has. And in order to decode the message, the allies would need to guess one out of 17,576 settings. But that's not it, not at all. We are just getting started, baby. First of all, the rotors are swappable, so you can change around the positions of the rotors themselves. Furthermore, there are five rotors to choose from. So how many ways can the rotors be arranged? Well, there are five to choose from. So there are five options for the first slot, and then four options for the second slot, and then three for the third. So the number of arrangements is five times four times three, which is 60 different arrangements of the rotors themselves. 
And with each arrangement having 17,576 different settings, that calculates to 1,054,560 different arrangements. Okay, so that's a few. But the Germans were like, only 1,054,560 possible settings. That's lame. So the Germans added one more addition to the Enigma machine to make the code stupidly unbreakable. If you open up the front of the box, then you'll see what is known as the plug board. This plug board allows you to connect letters into pairs. This just means that letters are kind of switched. So if A and N were connected on the plug board, then when we press A, that would go through the plug board, through the wire to N, and then it would continue normally as if you press the N key. This also applies for the output. If while pressing A, which is now N, the output would normally say C, but C and T are connected on the plug board, then the T light would go on. So just quickly again, because this is pretty complicated, we press A, then the electricity flows through the plug board into N, then it enters the rotors and then turns around and comes back through the rotors and then output it as C, which is then connected to T and thus the T light turns on. Bloody hell. But does this really make the Enigma machine all that more unbreakable? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. There are 10 plug connector wire things, which connects two letters together. So essentially we need to connect two ends of 10 connectors to plugs. So 20 plugs need to be plugged. There are 26 places left to stick the first plug, then 25 to stick the second, and then 24, 23, 22, 21, and so on. This calculates out to be a stupid big number of arrangements of the plugs. The actual calculation is 26 factorial divided by six factorial times 10 factorial times two to the power of 10, because there's some fancy probability math required, but I can't be bothered explaining that. All you need to know is that there's really large bloody number of arrangements of these plugs. In fact, there is 150,738,274,937,250 different possible arrangements for these plugs. And for every plug board setting, there is 1,054,560 possible settings of the rotors. So that means there is in total... <sighs> 158 quintillion, 962 quadrillion, 555 trillion, 217 billion, 826 million, 360 thousand flat different arrangements of the Enigma machine. The Germans accepted this. That, that was enough. <laughs> okay, now we know how it works. It's time for me to work for a living and actually code the damn thing. And then in the next video, I will attempt to crack the code in the same way that my man, Benedict, I mean, Alan Turing was able to. Here we go. Okay, first up, let's make an interface, which will show off the lamps for our Enigma machine. I'll just hook it up so that it just lights up whichever key I press on the keyboard. Okay, that's close, but we need the light to turn off once you've stopped pressing it. Okay, very nice. There it is. I also restricted the machine to only recognize one key press at a time, so you can't press down two or more keys at once, which would just kind of ruin the whole point of the machine. Yeah, so a machine which lights up the key that you pressed is hardly impressive. So let's add the rotors to the machine. Each rotor will contain a 2D array containing all the connections. I also exchanged the letters for numbers because, well, I do what I want and it made it easier. To make sure my machine is as authentic as possible, I grabbed the wiring for each rotor from the most legitimate source. I also created a little program that converts the connections that Wikipedia gives you into the code that I need to define them because I'm super lazy. I write code to give me other code. Anyway, so now we have the wiring for each rotor. Now let's use these connections to run the input through the rotor. Each rotor will take in a letter as input and then output whichever letter that input was connected to. We also need to make sure that once a key is pressed, the rotors will change position. Okay, fantastic. You can't see this, but I'm just spamming a single key. So since the rotors change position, every time I press the key, a different letter lights up. Okay, sexy stuff, but we're still not done yet. We need to add the plug board. This is pretty simple. Most of the challenge comes from making it look pretty. Each plug just contains two letters, which it connects. And if the user presses the key, which a plug is connected to, then it will output whichever other letter that plug is connected to. And then that will be run through the rotors. Okay, plug board is done and let's run it. Mmm, yep, <laughs> looks exactly the same. Fantastic job, Evan. 
quality bloody content. But it is much better, I swear. Well, it has much more settings now. Okay, so I made it look way more sexy. And here it is. Oh yeah, now we're talking. And if you click on the bottom of the screen, you'll be taken to the plug board. Okay, cool stuff. Now let's actually show this puppy in action. All right, so I'm gonna encode a secret message. And you can't see my hand, so it's super secret. All right, now comes the interactive section of the video. I've uploaded the Enigma machine application so you can follow the link in the description to get the machine. Now I'll show you the Enigma settings so you can decode this message. So you need to enter the message into a machine which has the settings which are currently on the screen. And if you do that, hopefully the original message will pop out. Okay, hopefully that works. Pretty embarrassing if it doesn't. Also, another thing to note is that the Enigma machine has no way of encoding a space, so the message will just be a string of letters. I'm sure you can figure it out. You've made it that far. You can figure out the lack of spaces. So you can use this machine to talk to your friends, or you can even use it to command your evil Nazi empire. Either way, have fun with it. <clears throat> in, the next <clears throat> in the next episode of Cold Bullet, Evan will attempt to crack this seemingly uncrackable code. This amazing feat has never, never been done before. Not even once. I, I swear, I promise. Can Evan stop the evil Nazi camel empire before it's too late? Tune in for next time for, to find out on Code Bullet to, right here. Okay, that's, that's enough of that. You, you get it. It's a, it's a part one thing to a two-part series. You get, you get it. Okay, let's have re real talk for a bit. Um, I'm sure you noticed I've been real slack lately in uploading. And I have good reason, I swear. Uni's been getting hectic lately and I was sick. And it's just been a mess. So I haven't been able to spend much time on making videos. We're almost done though, so in like two weeks, I'll be a free man, able to make way more videos. So just hold on tight, just for a bit, and I'll be back. Bye.